If you like watching mid-sized trucks like the Tacoma and full-size trucks like a Ram 2500 do a bit of off-roading, some hiking, sightseeing, animal watching, camping, all that jazz, you're gonna wanna stay tuned for this little series. We just got done wrapping up a uh, tour of the Midwest and West where we saw about six states, four national parks. We traveled almost 3,000 miles and generally just had some fun doing some cool stuff. This is a little different than the U-Ray trip we did last year where we were basically off-roading every day. But uh, if you guys like any of that stuff, you're gonna enjoy this. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into what we're just gonna call part one. Let's do it. So we had been planning this trip for around six months or so now after our last trip in Uray, Colorado, which was more of an off-roading style trip. We loved it, had a great time. If you wanna see more of that, check out the channel page. Uh, we had decided we kinda wanted to see Yellowstone. And instead of just beelining straight there, which is a, a pretty good haul from Eastern Iowa, we decided to break it up into a few days and see some things and do some hikes and drive some trails that I've kind of been wanting to do. So I started doing research. So we got our itinerary all planned out at this point. Uh, my buddy Dan from Ohio actually came in and met us at our place and we threw my FSR High Country 55 rooftop tent on his truck. So I know you're not seeing double there. He has a 2021 cement Tacoma that looks very similar to mine. And the reason why we did this is uh, I needed to pick up a new tent from my buddy Wes in South Dakota. He is uh, also known as Black Hills Taco on Instagram. Check him out if you're not familiar. He's got a sick rig. We'll come back to more of that later. And we set off. So we met up with my buddy Ben, who's in a Ram 2500, and both Dan in the Taco and Ben in the 2500 were with us for essentially the majority of the trip. Don't smile. Look, look serious. <laughs> After almost a full day of driving on the highway, we stopped at the first place anyone would stop doing this trip, of course, the Corn Palace in South Dakota. We had to check that out. We didn't stay there too long, but it was a cool stop and fun to see. That thing's pretty neat. They redo it every year, so it's always different. We headed to Wall, South Dakota for a little bit. A couple of the guys had never been to Wall Drug, so again, another necessary stop and super fun. Take it from me, the great Zoltar. Intending shall get you nowhere, but doing, yes, that will bring you much, much reward. Provide Zoltar more treasure, and I will provide you with the depths of wisdom. Then we headed straight to our very first campsite for the night, which was the Nomad View Campground which is kind of located, I believe, technically in the Buffalo Gap National Grasslands. It overlooks that area, kind of overlooks the Badlands. And to our surprise, this place, um, it was pretty packed, to say the least. Uh, it is accessible to RVs, and I think given the fact that it has some like notoriety and it has been uh, publicized and it's pretty easy to find information about. I think that's what kind of led to it uh, just being as busy as it was. So we were able to find a spot just fine, but it was a little bit busier than we would have liked. This is one of those places that is a fantastic view. Uh, and I would say you should, if you're in the area, definitely try and camp there at least once. Uh, with that said, I don't think I would camp there again personally. I like things a little bit more remote than that and a little bit more away from people but it was definitely kind of a bucket list checkoff item. So I would do it again if it wasn't busy, else I would probably drive out into the Buffalo Gap National Grasslands, kind of in the middle of nowhere and just camp by myself, but still very fun. And as you can see, the views at uh, this campsite were absolutely amazing. The next morning we got up fairly early, collected everything we needed and headed out, topped off with fuel and did a little bit of backtracking in the other direction to get back towards the Badlands, Badlands National Park went in there we immediately just did this hike uh, and i don't remember the name of it it's one of the main ones uh, when you're coming in that north entrance um, and it was pretty cool uh, definitely not something super strenuous as it's kind of labeled but that's kind of the thing that national parks do i feel like they're over labeling those trails for the sake of uh, individuals that probably aren't as used to hiking but great trail great view of the badlands 
From there, we got back on the road and headed for our first actual driving trail. This trail isn't anything too crazy, but it's something I've been aware of and kind of been wanting to do for a couple of years. So I'm not gonna talk too much about this one. I'm just gonna roll in some video and let you guys enjoy it. Up for snakes. <laughs> That's crazy. It's funny seeing the frame rate of the propellers in the camera versus yeah. this, they just like go floor. Go up as fast as you can go. Pretty cool. How far will we go? Uh, about four miles. What we got here? Four miles? That thing will do four miles. Yeah, it's a battery last time. That's crazy. Talking. Now it's recording, we're good.
Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We then headed out of the Badlands. We are done here for the remainder of the trip and we headed towards the Black Hills to meet up with my buddy Wes, AKA Black Hills Taco, who has this sick 2017, I think, rig on 35 inch tires and a, a ton of things done to it, way too many things to list. He was actually in the process of selling this and I think had just sold this. So I'm really curious to see what he ends up building up next. And of course we snagged that rooftop tent from him. So from here moving forward, we will no longer be sleeping on the ground. So I'm cool with that. Gotcha. Sorry for this pizza? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like pizza. We then grabbed a quick bite and a drink at a local Black Hills-ish brewery. Met up with a friend who was driving a crossover and with some directions from my buddy Wes, we headed out into the Black Hills on a trail that wasn't too difficult that we'd have issues with that crossover and tried to find a campsite for the night. Headed to our campsite, night two. <laughs> Let's get that one. Hey Ben, what you making? Boneless chuck rig. Oh yeah? Yeah. Little beef? Little beef. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're showing him who's boss? Yeah, I guess. Currently day three. First day was uh, just a road trip day. Second day, we were in and around the Badlands. 
and we did a sheet mountain table and ended up in the Black Hills last night after picking up uh, that rooftop tent. So we slept in the Black Hills last night, woke up, tried to get an early start this morning and we are on our way to Wind Cave. It was just too close to pass up. We're gonna squeeze it in and check off another national park from our list. So got about another 49 minutes till we're there. And then we're on our way to Devil's Tower through the Bighorn Mountains and gonna end up in 10 Sleep, Wyoming. So pretty excited about that, it should be fun. But we are gonna save the rest of that for the next video because this one is already way too long. And spoiler alert, we made it to Wind Cave. It was way too busy and we weren't actually able to tour the cave itself because the times they had available just did not fit our schedule. So that was a bit of a bummer. But tune in for the next video where we continue north into Wyoming and Montana on our way towards Yellowstone. We drive an amazing canyon trail that you're not gonna wanna miss and a couple other trails as we're continuing on with this journey. So thanks for watching. Check you guys in the next one.